What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tesla Fix. Today, we have also, again, a special guest, like in every episode. Last time, we had Omar on the Home Mask Catalog. Now, we have a channel favorite on again. Here is Brian from My Tesla Weekend talking about the Tesla factories, the price reductions, and also some expansions. So let's jump right into the episode. Welcome to Tesla Fix. Make sure to subscribe and like this episode. So Brian, welcome to Tesla Fix. I'm glad you're here. Uh, as always, I have a lot of fun with you talking about the, the stuff because you're the man of the factories. You can't deny it. In the whole Tesla community, you're the one who really is so deep into the factories. That's why we need to have you on um, because Tesla, yeah, does amazing jobs again uh, with managing those and yeah. So say hello Great. to the audience. I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Thanks everybody for having me, you know, and I'm just so delighted that you got Elon himself to do the the intro. Yeah. And it gives me comfort knowing that if I'm ever late or anything, <laughs> you can just uh, have me do it as well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Brian, um, in the last weeks, a lot of things happened. The Tesla stock price crashed and uh, the drama kept on boiling up again. Tesla Q was uh, pretty happy now that they started to lose less money, maybe. I don't know. But uh, yeah, the stock price recovered a little bit. Uh, but still, uh, is the stock price important uh do we need to care is it is it not important uh what it, how do it you really see isn't it really isn't over the short term what you get is emotions emotions rule the day and some short-term there's a, you'll always see people thinking it's the next get rich quick scheme and yeah. there's no such thing there's no such thing <clears throat> if you look at uh People say, well, if you, you if you look at this snapshot, you lost this much money. And somebody says, well, if you look at this snapshot, hey, guys, I don't live in snapshots. I live in time <laughs> yeah. and time yeah. is linear. So the longer this goes on, the more fundamentals are all that matters. Now, well, mm -hmm. the company's trading at such a massive P.E. ratio. It doesn't make any sense. Right. But this is a company that's growing in a field of companies that are dying. Mm -hmm. uh, Volks, you know, uh, Volkswagen Group has lost more sales in the last five years than Tesla has made. Tesla, they're That's they're down 2.7 million units a year, and Tesla isn't even at 2.7 million a year. So uh, why why? Why would you invest in a company that's dying? And Tesla is not just a car company. Well, mm -hmm. I need to see revenues. Great, because they're here. Stationary storage is a big deal. It's printing money. And every one of those shipping container size mega packs you see go out from the factory is something like $400,000 in profit. So that's crazy. I'm feeling fine. Yeah, that's that's good to know. So you've heard it here uh, that uh, you shouldn't pay attention as much. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. I also um, see that this way. And last time, uh, um, last last episode, Omar was Omar was on um, Omar's catalog also, and he also talked about this. And um, I asked a similar question, and he said, "Yeah." Look at what what was happening. I mean, um, Tesla is like the next Amazon or or the next Apple in the back in the days. It's it's still growing, and uh, like you said, the market is like going bananas. Um, if you if you look at it, because ICE vehicles are declining and EVs are are going up, the EV market is shrinking, but not Tesla. So that's also very important to note here, um, because we had those headlines as well. But what do you think was in the Tesla realm for you was from the last, let's say, last month. Um, what was your um, most important topic, the, the one that you thought this is the one, one key piece that, that uh, you really are, were invested in? It's, it's got to be the Cybertruck, right? Uh, it's no long, you know, the, the, the doubters were saying it's never going to happen. Yeah. And then we see one or two of them and then we see a few more and then we see three on a truck and then we see mm -hmm. eight on a pair of trucks and they're 
headed in all directions. They're headed up to the Midwest for, I believe, EPA testing for uh, mm -hmm. to measure the range and efficiency. They're headed to California for perhaps crash testing, since the mm -hmm. new crash test facility yeah. is not complete yet in Texas. And they're 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 moving out. And what I tweeted was, uh, you know, for the delivery event, instead of prioritizing local deliveries, forget it. Stick with the reservation numbers. We know what the reservation numbers are. Let's go with those and let give everyone the option. Do you want to wait and get it locally or do you want to fly down and drive it home? Because then for the next week, the next month, there'll be nothing but highway sightings of look what I found. This thing <laughs> is real. I've seen it. It's everywhere. And it'd be uh, a social media bonanza, the likes mm -hmm. of which no amount of advertising could make up for. Yeah, I'm, I'm still still uh, salty that this thing isn't delivered to Germany right now. But uh, let's see how it unfolds. I think um, when this thing is rolling out, we will see if this comes. Uh, the crash tests are very important because of the pedestrian safety issue. We, like people talk about this here all the time that, oh, it, this thing will never come to Germany. And also uh, Matthew Donegan Ryan is, uh, has said that he doesn't believe that thing coming to Europe very soon. Of course, the US market is way bigger and um, they have enough orders there to deliver there. And it makes sense that they first cater to this market and then come to come to Europe maybe. But uh, he sees China first and then, then, then Europe maybe someday in 2026 or something like this. But I'm still hopeful because I have a order many people from the channel know that already and i'm waiting for the cyber truck because i want to buy a plane ticket just fly to the u.s and make a video about the cyber truck. this would be so awesome and that's what i was going to say okay. is there will be a lot of people who do that who book yeah. it on Turo, fly over spend a week driving it and and just <laughs> yeah. live the dream however briefly <laughs> yeah so it's pretty exciting that uh, there were like if like maybe two even one and a half week ago, people still thought this thing isn't real. It's uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty interesting to witness. Ah, uh, that's absolutely crazy. Uh, so yeah, but but how do you think um, that the production of the Cybertruck um, will be in that that sense? Because the factory, the tooling, have we heard something about the about the factory? Are they still just doing everything by hand, <laughs> like many? Yeah. Um, so we say. don't, yes. So we don't know that part because they're capable mm -hmm. of covering the windows. We know the line exists. We don't know how much use it's getting. The mm -hmm. most recent estimate I heard was they're at a rate of six to nine trucks a day. That right there exceeds the rate at which you would hand build them. Uh, so they, but yeah, we can't see an, an a new uh, email was circulated saying as a reminder, we have a zero tolerance policy for leaking photos from inside the factory. And uh, I heard that someone just last week was fired over being oh, caught yeah. with a camera. And, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and I've got sources inside the factory and what I've told them is I'm not publishing anything from inside the factory mm -hmm. until, until we are past this point, because I'm not yeah. going to get you fired. It's not worth it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. As much That's as I'd good. love it, that, yeah, small bump in traffic is not worth your yeah. career. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, but but are you excited if you compare the Cybertruck line? Is it so different from the Model Y production, or can we say okay, they're pretty similar because the exoskeleton thing fell through? Um, so, how how do you see this? So, I would agree with what you just said that the exoskeleton did fall through. I would say that it. While, while it is still going to provide a substantial amount of structural integrity, mm -hmm. it is not going to be the entire, the entire amount like it was expected to be. Uh, because of that, yes, yeah, some of the other elements have been uh, reverted to more traditional car design. When mm -hmm. it comes to the entire skateboard, that's pretty much figured out. Tesla knows how to make a battery, how to make mm -hmm. front and rear castings, and how to put them all together. Uh, but they don't... Um, but the and the steel, as complicated mm -hmm. as some of the doubters will say, is not complicated. Bending steel is easy. It's been done for a hundred years effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a a a, 
a press break that is larger than some, but not the largest and mm -hmm. material that is thicker than most, but far from the thickest. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, but dialing in any new line generally takes some time unless you're Shanghai, in which case it's just already running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talking about Shanghai, I think this, uh, that's a great uh, transition because, um, yeah, it's it's so interesting what's happening there because their uh, rumor kitchen was was cooking. Uh, we could say that for the last two weeks, uh, it, it gets strong, it got stronger and stronger. It's about the model Highland Model Three Highland uh, line that uh, some some influencers in the Tesla space say that it's not real, it doesn't exist. But um, I disagree. Um, we've we've seen some indications of that. I mean. It, it is a redesign, but I think it's going to be a substantial, it's, it's going to be, be pretty differently uh, built. And what's your key takeouts from the, from the Highland? So the Highland in Shanghai is undeniable. Uh, we'd heard rumors that the line was being configured. We heard rumors that they were taking some of it down for retooling. And then maybe a month ago, yeah, a month ago, I started seeing them show up in drone footage and I started mm -hmm. sharing those. And these are that, well, these could be anything, right? These are sedan shaped and sized cars that are hidden behind a privacy fence and car covers. These are something different. Uh, we'd also seen the testing in Fremont. We'd seen them all over the roads. We'd seen leaked photos of them. It's real. It's happening. Now the question is, is it going to happen in Shanghai at the same time as it is in, uh, in Fremont? And Shanghai, to me at least, is pretty evidently slightly ahead of uh, where Fremont is at in that production flow. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. Um, but this is real and imminent. The only remaining question, I guess, for, because there's still a handful of people who, who just don't for whatever reason, don't believe it. And they say, well, it's mm -hmm. a slight refresh. It's nothing significant. Um, it may not look significant on the outside. It doesn't have to, uh, for it to be real because mm -hmm. you've got, uh, if it's got the structural front and rear castings, which we believe it will, if it's got a structural battery, which is, I'd say about 50, 50, mm -hmm. all of those improve cost. They improve speed. They improve efficiency. They make a cheaper car, uh, that's every bit as good, maybe even a little bit better. And there are a huge number of lessons that were learned later uh, with the Model Y that were not yet carried forward, uh, carried backward to the Model 3. It's time for those. This will improve the margins, not so much for this quarter, but in Q4 and beyond, because the at launch, there's no way this is going to be as cheap or cheaper than the Model 3 today. Why would it be? They're still ramping demand as high. We're going to be looking at big fat margins on the Model 3 uh, with those normalizing only once demand is satisfied in two to three years or more. And mm -hmm. it will take that long because they only make Model 3 in two factories. And I have seen nothing to indicate plans to expand Model 3 production into other factories. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And I've also seen um, this picture that you've shared um, about the castings. Um, those ones here uh, we can see. And this is from this is from Shanghai, right? Yes. This one, and we yes. have another one, which is from Texas. From Texas, yeah. So that one I got to see. I went to Monroe and Associates' actual facility in Michigan, nice. and uh, Corey Steuben gave me a tour, and that's what we got to see. Now, in that in the video where I did that, it's one of the if you, if you were to look it up on the channel, it's one of the ones I did with Corey. Mm -hmm. Before it, he showed the original Model Y rear casting, which was famously two pieces with a seam down the middle. And he said, mm -hmm. it's actually not two pieces. It's more than two pieces because those crush cans that come down the back, those arms that poke down towards the camera, those mm -hmm. were not structural elements yet. Those were something that was added on. And mm -hmm. if you look, the two castings are very similar uh, with the only real difference I can see being that the yellow one does not have the two little hooks protruding up in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right here. Yeah, those those mm -hmm. in the middle. I don't know if you see the mouse here. I don't know. But I yeah, the the, those in the middle. Okay. Yeah, yeah. in the middle. And, yeah. and also, it's very subtle, but you might notice that the one in China has been painted orange. Uh, yeah. Wait, <laughs> I can't see. Right. Let me check. Mm -hmm. Ah, now uh, I see it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Is. 
Yeah, so so interesting stuff here. Um, like, I mean, those are the castings, and if you think about it, um, it's we're getting closer and closer to Elon's thought of uh, producing a Hot Wheels car. Actually, yes. uh, like having a lot of, I, I mean, the unbox uh, unbox method is the closest we can get to that. It's like Lego. You you print out the f uh, uh, front piece. You print out like I'm, I'm talking about printing. Of course, I mean pressing and and everything sure. but but um or casting uh yeah you cast those pieces you cast the the battery you put the seats already onto the battery and everything and then you just pop it up and and put it in uh in inside of the car and maybe we down the line we have the giga mega ultra uh, super omega uh, crazy gal galaxy press which can pr uh, just print the car actually uh, by by one one press of a button, but uh, It'd be who knows? Interesting. <laughs> but but we are very very close, yeah. Yeah, and the uh, with the unbox method, that means that not just the seats, but also the carpet is already there, the wiring mm -hmm. is already there, yeah. And because it's all going to be forty eight volt on the new compact, that means instead of the wire needing to be a continuous long thick strand of copper that runs the length of the car, mm -hmm. each each section can have a little. Uh, connect a LAN connector mm -hmm. just yeah. like a little yeah a very easy clip that's very reliable mm -hmm. and put it all together in advance then the question becomes do you have is the car drive by wire is the braking still uh hydraulic or is it pneumatic mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it uh electronic because mm -hmm. you still have to run those lines the full length of the car in an in yep. unboxed system maybe maybe the whole thing goes to by wire we we shall see yeah, we, we we shall see, and I think um, interesting enough. Like uh, the the Tesla bot now comes also into the picture at Mexico. Maybe we don't know uh, how long this will take. What is your take on uh, uh, like like the dream that they had, or or the 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 concept here that we see on this picture that the the a bot is capable of working on those parts uh, easier? But uh, how do you think that this? will come to fruition is it is it down the line is it tomorrow or in, in a few so years? we've got friends in common and i know folks like randy kirk and scott walter believe yeah. this is happening any second and i yeah. do not share that optimism uh i am <laughs> of the belief that while they could do the job at some capacity maybe now or certainly within a few months uh that they won't because they'll be too slow and they would need too much hand holding. And if there's one thing about a Tesla factory, it's that the pace is very, very fast mm. and there's no room for even slow humans. They need fast humans. Interesting. Yeah. I also agree with that. I think um, what, what the bot could do like, like Scott, uh, like famously talks on every podcast he's on um, that um, the bot could um, operate those those cranes and those um, uh, machines that that uh, feed the 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 zoo, like he called. I, I'm not sure if it, if it was sure. the zoo, but he said that those cages where the where the uh, kuka arms uh, or the robot arms just take take stuff, and the human operator has to place them still, um, and and has to be careful that he is in the right timing or he he doesn't cross the line because then the machine stops. Um, because of security reasons um, that he doesn't get hit by a like 300 kilometer per hour crane, of course. <laughs> yeah. Of even faster, so for a lot of jobs, there are a lot of jobs where a bot running at one third the speed of a human works just fine because they can work three times as long as a human. But that doesn't work in a tight mm -hmm. space factory, yeah. high pace mm -hmm. environment. If you want, it's like, uh, well, I, I can make you a baby in nine months. No deal. Give me nine women. I'll give you a month. That's not mm. how it works. That, mm. You can't do that. That's, you can that's... try. <laughs> so to everybody, maybe you could uh, write down in the comments uh, how, uh, mm -hmm. how, which, which uh, of those uh, uh, ways is the best one to, 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 to make children. Uh, <laughs> we can just decide maybe. <laughs> yeah, but, but to back to the facts, uh, back to the, the uh, nitty gritty stuff. Um, how about um, the Model Highland uh, or Model 3 Highland? Um, how do you think this will be placed in the Tesla ecosystem? 
uh, from the from the cost perspective and also from from the positioning. I know, I mean, Model 3, of course, is positioned where it's positioned, and then we have the Model Y. It was pretty close at some times, um, especially when the co uh, the co like the Tesla's cost very uh, when the costs started to ramp. Uh, up in in 2021, I think it was, uh, where it's uh, or 2022. I mean, um, where it really f flown off the the thing, and everybody said, "Oh God, Tesla is raising prices. This is a bad sign." And then they lowered prices, and then they said, "Tesla lowered the prices. This does make does make sense." So it's a bad yeah. sign. <laughs> it's well, bad and sign. James Stevenson <laughs> likes to point out, well, uh, when when Tesla Q sees an empty parking lot, they say, "Look at that." Uh, they can't build them fast enough. And when they see a full parking lot, they say, look at that. They can't sell them. So uh, <laughs> when you're impossible to please, at some point, people stop trying. So when I talked to Corey uh, at Monroe and Associates a month mm -hmm. or two ago, I asked him, uh, which one is cheaper to manufacture, the Model 3 or the Model Y? And he, and he paused on it. He said, well, the Model Y is the process and the procedure is simpler and cheaper. So at first glance, you'd say the Model Y is cheaper to build, but it has more matter, more atoms, more material, more steel, more everything. And that drives up the price. So what he was saying is his belief was both of those vehicles cost about the same to build. Mm -hmm. um, he said, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's close. What mm -hmm. Model 3 Highland Refresh will do is bring down the, the manufacturing costs of the Model 3 because they're getting a better margin out of the Y than the 3. And they're still making as many 3s as they can sell, but this will allow them more flexibility in the pricing. They don't have to come down much more. Even another one or 2,000 will make it the most compelling sedan in the US. It already is in a lot of states. Uh, mm -hmm. And internationally, it does pretty well as well. I saw that in Europe, I think it was uh, Lars, friend of both our shows, Lars put mm -hmm. out a, a, a tweet showing that in terms of revenue, the Y and the three are the two top cars in Europe. And they, yeah, this will, and then if we're looking at margin, this mm -hmm. will just expand Tesla's margin. So where will this fit? It'll fit perfectly between the Model Y and the Compact in terms of both pricing and utility, I think. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also agree very much there. And um, you've talked about the margins. Um, how do you think how big the margins would be on this car? Just just a speculation. We are here in total fantasy land now. Sure. So so n please don't clip this as the facts. <laughs> so right. Just just an so, assumption. So so. Definitely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so once the line, when the line first starts, negative, of course, got to get the line moving. Yeah. Once it's fully ramped, say three months, six months, somewhere around there, uh, I think they'll be selling them in the forty to forty-five thousand range because they're mm -hmm. the new hotness. Yeah. But okay. making them in like the twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand range. So the rate, so the margin on these will be, will be eye-wateringly high um, as it as time goes on i can see these coming down to 34 35 000 for a nice model 3 and they're mm -hmm. already close to that and again they'd be making them at 26 27 so mm -hmm. easily in excess of 20 percent margins Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. And I also think I, I thought about like 25% ish in that ballpark. I think that's very reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's going to be good. And also, I think when they started, uh, when they start to drop the prices, I assume that they w will do that, that they're going to place them like right above like 10, 10K more than the $25,000 car the compact that they're right. going to put out in the 20. Uh, 35,000 range um, in that sense, because I think um, now we can segue to the European market because there's where the compact cars or cheaper cars are very important because, like I've said, it was pretty controversial on X, um, but before it was Twitter when I claimed this and many Germans were furious that I said this, but I think we are in a very cheap labor uh, country. I, I know we have Eastern Europe and everything and they are even more cheap, but People don't have as much money to spend here. And um, most of the cars that are sold here are actually company cars. That's very important to note here. That means that also Tesla from the strategy 
of um, penetrating the German market, they kind of have to market to companies as well because those are the biggest um, uh, consumers of, of cars because uh, when you, you get benefits, when you start to work somewhere, they're going to say, ah, oh, uh, how about a company car? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> and to leverage because, of course, the wages in comparison, for example, to Switzerland, I mean, this is a bold comparison because they aren't even in the EU, but the wages are pretty different uh, because I live right at the Swiss border, so I know uh, the feel there, <laughs> what's happening in Switzerland. But um, so, yeah. The, like a $50,000 car is pretty expensive here because the wages are, the average wages here are also like 50,000 50, a, a year around that um, ballpark. So not not so big, like 40 to 50K um, a year. And yeah, the car loans are very expensive here as well. So, so many people buy smaller cars, of course, $10,000 cars. It's very popular here. $15,000 also the Golf uh, was is, is a yeah is a entry level car here like 30k is a pain painstaking uh, area that's my thesis but how do you think how how the compact will impact the the, the European market I mean maybe you have some assumptions there I should be the expert on Europe but <laughs> but uh, you, what are your you, you are and you will be on my show <laughs> on that very topic but I will share yeah, my thoughts which is which is compact cars globally <laughs> are still the biggest seller because they can operate in more uh, in a wider variety of road and traffic conditions. You can drive mm -hmm. them on busier streets, on smaller streets, on older streets. Uh, if you look at the size of a Model S, my gosh, that thing barely fits in a parking spot. They are huge. The Model 3, a welcome change, much smaller. But when you're talking about roads that were built 500 years ago, and designed for foot traffic, maybe a donkey or two, those roads get real skinny and you're going to struggle with anything bigger than a compact. When I was in England, there were, comp I mean, compacts were just everywhere. A lot of the Uber drivers were driving slightly larger cars, but they were still what an American would call a compact car. Yeah. So that market is vast. That is all the Corollas, all the Civics, all the, yeah. There's yeah, five hundreds are also very, yeah. very popular. The, the smaller yeah. ones, yeah. Too many to name, and so mm -hmm. I could, I could see the Model Y being unseated as the global bestseller by the compact. And mm -hmm. if the compact is made in three different models, I could see two of them, if not all three, easily in the top ten globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could also see that because. I mean, what you've described with the roads uh, will infuriate especially some uh, German viewers here because um, it's it's pretty different from, it, it depends on the country. So France and uh, Germany um, really has big roads, also Spain. But if you go more south, for example, Italy is very extreme. It's very old, of course. It has like very uh, small beautiful uh, uh, roads everywhere uh, and also like you've mentioned England as well has the countryside there is uh, yeah pretty pretty different than than uh, in, in in Germany because many things were rebuilt and built out so we have the bigger autobahn the, the roads are pretty big and um, but but still you're, you're right uh, the streets in comparison to the US are, are pretty narrow um, in comparison in some areas uh, of course in the biggest cities not but but uh, yeah we have those and um, so the compact is a very popular option here. Um, so, of course, this will sell. The like city I cakes. live in, yeah. <laughs> the city I live in, was built in 1923. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> th crazy. it was it was a hundred percent <laughs> planned. It was one of the first planned cities, and it was built uh, around the automobile. And boy, does it show! It is. <laughs> yeah. It is. the The guy had a vision, and I think he might have been cross eyed. So <laughs> what I found is, very yeah. interesting, yeah, because you said the, the big roads, like built, cities built for, for the cars, what really struck me when I was in the US, I've, I've, I've visited some, some, sometimes and um, I was in New York and also in, in Florida. And what I've, what I've witnessed was I've seen people getting in their car, making a U-turn to go on the other side of the street <laughs> with their car. And uh, mm -hmm. in, for me as a German, just, just walk. Uh, I mean, the road is big, but but that's that's the 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 thing. Uh, the the scale is so big that so yeah that 
even smaller like smaller errands you could do uh, are are made by car even if it's on the other side of the street uh, i was laughing at that pretty hard as a european but then i'd uh, have so. to walk <laughs> back to get my car again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I also think the compact will have a huge impact. And uh, yeah, do you think in, in the longer term, will Tesla be producing even a smaller car than the compact car? Or do you think that's the, mm. that's the bottom I line? That's do we it. use cars uh, even <laughs> over there? Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it. I, I haven't seen anything that would... A lot of people have said, oh, do a trike, do a motorcycle. And Elon has said, safety first and foremost. It's got to be four wheels. It's got to be very safe. If you look at the thickness of the door of a Model Y or a Model 3 and compare it with the thickness of a door of other cars of comparable size, the Tesla has a thicker door. Mm -hmm. And that's not to reduce weight. That's not to make the car easier to build. It's just safety. So I think I think the compact would be the end. Of that road mm -hmm. yeah maybe they can just uh, start to even make it cheaper and cheaper if if they or just keep at a level where they have huge margins or they just take it for the full self-driving uh, software and do a robot taxi network that they wanted to do so talking about fsd because i've got a Ask some, some hot questions here <laughs> for you because uh, my viewers also want to know this maybe Uh, is that how about uh, how, how do you see the deployment of FSD? Um, do you see that we Tesla will sell cars in the future? Could they stop selling cars in the future? Does that make sense? Because I've heard also some people in my comments talking about this. I found it very interesting. So that's why I'm bringing this up. What do you think Tesla will do with the, with the FSD software? There? So there are people who will never stop buying a car. There are people who, mm -hmm. no matter yeah. what the cost is, will always own a car. We are hunters and gatherers. And for those who are gatherers, <laughs> they like to have their things and they like to have their things in their things. So car sales will never go away. That would be just giving up some of the addressable market. And you'd say, mm -hmm. well, but Tesla might want to own all the cars that they manufacture. Uh, that is as of, Even a $20 billion dollar pile of cash will not buy you enough inventory to make it cash flow positive before you run out. Uh, so they may begin to start putting together a fleet, but mm -hmm. all the while they would be ramping up production even further. So I don't see private sales going away ever. Uh, I do. I could see the end of selling you FSD, whether mm -hmm. it's just included or more likely licensed. Um, and I think they would do that as long as there's still a steering wheel. Once there's no steering wheel, they have to sell it to you. Otherwise you don't own your car, uh, mm -hmm. but they would. Yeah. But I could see licensing it and there will be a window of time when they can charge anything they want for that. 200 a month would be the bare minimum for a utility of that, of that magnitude, but it will be commoditized at some point. It'll be something that everybody fights over. Ours is cheaper. And once you've recovered your costs, sure, you're going to keep making it better, but it no longer costs infinity dollars to not get it done. Every dollar mm -hmm. you put in should yield some improvement. And if it isn't, you're doing it wrong. So uh, I think in the beginning, it'll be more expensive and then it'll become less expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, like a new computer. Yeah, that's true. So when when Tesla starts to ramp up production, like going, we are, maybe we are at the 10 million number, the magic 10 million, 20 million, maybe 20 million number. Let's say the 20 million number, a little bit more extreme being on Elon's time, time schedule here uh, that maybe <laughs> won't come into fruition. We don't know. But uh, how do you see when, when really the production is ramped up, the cost structure is in line and everything they have their materials they have the the the, the supply chain is, is flawless how do you think the 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 costs of the production for example of a model 3 could decline and how much would be the margin like like what is the what do you think about the the, the craziest margin you can imagine with production have you heard a number have you thought about this Or maybe you can guess, just guess. I don't know. Sure. It would just be a guess. I certainly haven't heard any or talked to anybody about it. But there is a, a minimum uh, 
that you should be charging. You don't need to sell cars at cost. So no, forgetting no. about the extra cash on, on full self-driving, because that mm -hmm. right there triples yep. your margin. Um, <laughs> even, even before counting that, just on the hardware, there's no reason that a fully ramped Model 3 couldn't have yeah, 25 to 30% margins. I think mm -hmm. I, I think that's where it would have to top out because if you go any higher, then you're sacrificing volume for margin. And mm -hmm. while mm -hmm. a big, big margin is nice, at the end of the day, you pay your bills with dollars, not percentages. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's absolutely true. And you have to sell those. And, and I mean, big margins could be, I mean, you can have, for example, luxury sport cars have a huge margin. But not the volume. <laughs> so not the volume. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, and you know, if you look at like the Rimac, which is going to be two, three million, mm -hmm. uh, and they say, "Oh, we well, started deliveries." No, you gave the prototype to somebody. But <laughs> whatever. It's uh, even at those prices, they're not going to make money because they're only going to sell one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I don't know if you heard, but the Rimac went out to the uh, Nurburgring. And beat the plaid by twenty seconds. Uh, by twenty seconds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, interesting. It's it's quite fast. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, two seconds would have been impressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. twenty seconds—that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's still not <laughs> the fastest car by any stretch, but it's yeah, it's it, it put up a good time. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good. But of course, yeah, the volume is the issue. Um, talking about like the other competitors, the EV makers, the other EV or, or ICE engine maker or, or the established ICE car manufacturers or legacy car co companies. And then you uh, see Tesla, of course, uh, doing their thing. But how do you see the, do you see a death spiral going on? And mm. What indications do you see inside of the death spiral? Because we all know VW is struggling with their software still. They, it's, it's a huge mess still, and they haven't figured it out yet. Audi also did a great job with their, or tried to do a great job with their EVs. It doesn't look as good as well. Not talking about uh, anything uh, in, the, in the ballpark of FSD, They, they scrapped the plans already and everything. So um, innovation seems to stagnate everywhere. Uh, they, the legacy car companies uh, seem to really have a hard time to, to make this transition like we've predicted for years, uh, but now we see it unfold. It's, it's a pretty different story now. And we also see they still are betting on hybrids because what what should they do they they <laughs> they yeah they they're stuck they're really much stuck so so what for you are the 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 biggest indications for legacy car companies to 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 be in this death spiral and how could they get out but first maybe we can go through the biggest um yeah drags well, we'll for those sure. companies yeah so uh right now it's very ugly on a number of fronts But, it, but that doesn't mean it can't change quickly. Software mm -hmm. is something that can be fixed, once and for all mm -hmm. fixed. They can get it to a nine and then spend the next 10 years getting it to a 10. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And it's software is can be fixed quickly in ways that, for example, uh, a, a culture of poor manufacturing cannot. So there are some manufacturers you've seen who, no matter what they do, cannot build a reliable car. That's mm -hmm. something else. Um, mm -hmm. So if they get the software and they can, that whole problem goes away. Um, mm -hmm. Then there's things like innovation. Um, I'm going to argue they don't have to innovate. I'm going to argue that all, all the innovation needs to be in the drivetrain and that's it. And that mm -hmm. they can be, they can be 20% worse than the market leader and still make a car that most people would never know has anything missing. Uh, so mm -hmm. electric motors are so much simpler. And if they can't build a good motor, they can probably license a good motor for cheap or just buy a good motor for cheap. Not today, but in the next three to five, definitely 10 years. Where they excel is in coach building, the actual part that goes on top. 
legacy companies are very good at bending and painting metal. And that's not something that's easy to learn. So what I'm looking for to get out of the death spiral, to, to know if they're in one, because uh, I, I saw a criticism on one of my videos. Do you think Toyota could be in trouble? They sold, you know, 6 million cars, 8 million, whatever. Right. But in most of their biggest markets, they've got 10 years to, to stop selling all those cars and start selling electric cars. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do? They need to be transitioning. They need to increase their sales of electric cars the, in the product mix by 10% a year just to mm -hmm. get close mm -hmm. to where they need to be. And they're not mm -hmm. doing it. So that, so that means they need to be at 600,000 and then, you know, 1.2 million, 1.8. I mean, they need to, and the, the one bad sign I would look for is, is all the lithium locked up and Jordan Giesegi from the limiting factor has a great series on it. It's very dry. I don't know how many people watched it, but I live for this stuff, man. And he was saying that these mines will not increase their output because the lifespan of a mine is generally 20 years. And mm -hmm. if you want to use it up in 10 years or five years, you can just put in double or quadruple the equipment. But now you've got all this extra expense and you don't have more material. You just sell it quicker. So mm -hmm. a lot of these mines are just not going to increase output. They're going to keep the mm -hmm. output low and keep it for 20 years while they're exploring for new stuff. And a lot of the lithium out there is spoken for whether it's by mm -hmm. LG or Panasonic or Tesla themselves. Uh, SK Innovations is building new battery factories with Ford. That's going to run the chance of saving them. If you're not building your own battery factory, I don't know if you're going to make it. So what would I actually look for in the death spiral? Um, for parts, First of all, for part suppliers to start going out of business, if somebody who makes a component for your gas engine disappears, that could be the beginning of the end. Uh, and also if your volume pricing begins to erode, because just like increasing your buying gets you better prices, decreasing your spend gets you worse prices. And if all of a sudden your Camry costs 10 or 20% more than it did, or there's no margin left in it, mm -hmm. that could be the death spiral right there. Because we're already mm -hmm. in many parts of the US, an electric, a good electric car is cheaper than a Camry. Mm -hmm. That's that's got that's if true. that's not making them lose sleep, <laughs> then they then I don't know what they're doing. That's absolutely true. I mean, those incentives are pretty good in the US right now and um, many I mean I mean Germany just recently like not recently but they've started to uh, lower and lower and lower the incentives because yeah they they don't want to because it did the anymore. job mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well and it, you yeah, start it, with yeah, the carrot it, mm -hmm. yeah you start with the carrot the carrot is the incentive is the cash mm -hmm. to do the right thing and when that doesn't work we've got a hard ban in a certain year that's the stick and yeah yeah we don't need to keep giving you carrots once we're in stick territory. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then there are probably a handful of uh, suppliers of electric vehicles or good, comparable good vehicles. And I think, um, yeah, Tesla is, yeah, I mean, the compact is, is going to change everything, I think. And people won't uh, don't realize actually what this means because this is something where they could, with that, they can dethrone VW. No, no, I, in my opinion, actually. Um, so it's going to be very, very exciting to see because, um, like we've seen in the Super Bowl commercials, they they advertised EVs. Every competitor of Tesla um, marketed and uh, spent money left and right for marketing instead of improving their products. Uh, and then, <laughs> what happened? Of course, in the internet age, people compare. And what did they compare? They compared it to Tesla right away. And uh, then they realized, wait a second, this Tesla has more range. It has more space. It is faster. <laughs> it's delivered to me, to my front door. And 
then they ordered a Tesla. We've seen the spikes after the Super Bowl. Something like this, um, I think, will happen. And um, we also had that the Model Y was more uh, was sold in Europe more than the even the Golf, which is a huge car here, the VW Golf. Um, and yeah, this is crazy because this is the champion of compact cars, and even the Model Three already, um, yeah, dethroned it in one month or two months, I think it was. So. It was just a hint, like a small trailer of what, what's going to happen. So this is pretty interesting. Um, there are a lot this, of yeah. stories I've heard from from people I've met in real life, from people I've met online, and even from Alexandra Mertz, Tesla Boomer Mama, mm -hmm. yeah. where they say, in her case, she said, we had leased, a, I, I don't remember, some electric car. Mm -hmm. And then they were on vacation. They're like, well, let's rent a Tesla. So they got a Tesla and they drove it. And when they got home, they returned their lease early, even though it cost extra, <laughs> bought yeah. a Tesla I don't and, read the story. and bought the stock. And I've heard that a lot of times where people said, I got behind the wheel and I said, oh, wow, this is different. Something mm -hmm. is going on here. And that's what we're seeing. Um, and that's the beauty of the Hertz program is people are finally getting mm -hmm. to, getting to yeah. get behind the wheel. Uh, Turo has done a great job of getting those out on the road. Yeah, it's very exciting. And uh, and other mm -hmm. car companies don't have that kind of enthusiasm. The problem mm -hmm. I saw with the Super Bowl ads is they were never advertising a car. They were mm -hmm. advertising the idea of a car. They mm -hmm. didn't show you the range or the acceleration or or say this is why you should buy the the Chevy Turd. Mm -hmm. I don't know which car they were selling. <laughs> I'm it's pretty sure it was one. that one. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's this, the one. And it's real. I think it's real. <laughs> I think it is. And so they, they great, good job. You spent $10 million and you convinced the viewers of the lifestyle. So now I'm going to go out and now I'm in. I'm in on the lifestyle. What's in the lifestyle? Well, there's one that's actually available, a company that actually makes them now instead of three years from now. Good job. Good yeah. job. You advertise for your competitors. <laughs> and you can can order from your mobile phone. It's going to be delivered in like five to, I don't know, one month maybe uh, if it's if you and there's no a bad delivery. There's no car dealership experience. Yeah, the car dealerships. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matthew Donegan Ryan had an experience with a Ford F-150 or a Ford dealer. Um, he just wanted to know the pricing and uh, the guy didn't want to tell him the price and uh, said, oh, let's do a call. Let's do a meeting and, and stuff like this. And he really harassed him even. And then suddenly he wrote him on Facebook as well <laughs> or on Meta. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy was so desperate to sell a car. Uh, so the dealerships are struggling, I think. Uh, so, yeah, crazy. But but uh, the measures, maybe they can, um, maybe the dealerships start to... Uh, Get mug you on the street to buy it. Buy this for it. <laughs> Come on, buy it. <laughs> well, and that's what they're how... finding is the days of inventory. I looked up on Auto Trader, and I <clears> saw <throat> this is about a week ago. New Ford Mustang Machis in the U.S. over twelve thousand were available on dealer lots. The uh, uh, EV6 had about six thousand, and the ID4 had about eight thousand. That's a lot of inventory on hand. Um, they thought electric cars would sell themselves. And it depends on the electric car, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, you've, you've mentioned a point, a point here that's pretty interesting, is that these um, backlog numbers are so inflated, um, actually, or deflated, let's say uh, this way, um, because it, it's off the books when Ford sells it to the dealers. So then the inventory is gone for them, but the dealer has the inventory now. So if people compare the inventory numbers of the company Ford to the inventory numbers of the company Tesla that sells directly to consumer, uh, of course, there are more cars on the parking lot, maybe some, some, someday. But the important number is how many weeks are we until the lot is empty again because... Tesla produced so many EVs that 40,000 Model 3s on a lot sounds pretty much uh, like a huge number, but actually it's, it's, it's about how many weeks it will stand there. So 
yeah, that's, that's just a small hint for everybody who compares those numbers that we've heard, uh, like I've heard very ridiculous uh, comparisons <laughs> since in that sense. And people have to, I, I think it's very important to know that, that, that the, actually the, it's a, like you said, compare what, uh, how many cars of a brand is on the parking lot of a, or on the lot of a dealership actually, there's where the inventory is. It's just off the books from the, from the, from the, uh, yeah, the brands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So pretty interesting stuff here. Um, so Brian, I think, um, this was interesting right now. You are uh, correct. For the, yeah, that is correct. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, but for the end, I wanted to know, um, do you see Tesla having a monopoly soon? Um, how many, uh, how much market share do you think Tesla will rack up if car companies won't start to turn around this, this death spiral, actually? I mean, and, and which, which car uh, company will, s how do you see has the best chance to survive? Is it Ford? Is it GM? Is it, <laughs> I have to laugh there. Sure. But, <laughs> yeah. Sure. But you know. Yeah. yeah Mary Led, we know. We know. Yeah. Uh, and it mattered. So, <laughs> and it mattered. Thank you. God, someone gets it. So, yes. Mm, Thanks, mm, Mary. <laughs> mm. So, uh, how much market can they get? My guess is they would top out at around 25% global market share. Mm -hmm. General Motors at one point had well over 50% market share in the US. That's crazy. That's unimaginable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even if Tesla hits their loftiest ambition of 20 million units, I think right there we would start to see it taper and the global market is 80 to 90 million, so that even that's under 20%, uh, under 25%. So mm -hmm. it is I and I think that's as far as they could go with that. Um mm -hmm. and there will never be uh so it, it would never get to the point where it's such a monopoly that it would need to be broken up. Mm -hmm. Um And I'm not even sure how you would do it. Who's in second place? I have an answer per continent. How about that? In mm -hmm. Europe, I think the, <laughs> I think in Europe, I think the pretty clear second place is Volkswagen. They are mm -hmm. doing good numbers. They are introduce. They are announcing models and introducing them. They yeah. are doing cost effective things like sharing the Audi and the Taycan bodies. So that mm -hmm. they can, so that they can appeal to two slightly different markets without having to build two completely different cars, and they're mm -hmm. good cars. Um, in and China, with VW, the, you mean not the VW brand, but the the group, right? The, the um, group, the whole group. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then in China, BYD appears to be the clear leader. They've got small margins right now, but they're growing. They're spending a lot on capex which is what you want to see in a growth segment. And you've got, they've got vertical integration that a lot of other manufacturers simply don't. They design their chips, they build their own batteries. Well, where are you going to get your battery? We make them, we make the batteries. Mm -hmm. And be it being China, China's got a huge percentage of the world's lithium on lock. And yeah. China makes almost all the, you know, probably 60, 70% of the world's lithium batteries at this point. Um, mm -hmm. so th those are my, those are my runners up in the U S who's in second, I guess I'd have to say Ford, but it's such a distant second that it's, mm -hmm. that it's, it's still anyone's game, but at least mm -hmm. they've got battery factories underway. They've got some new model Chevy's oh, Chevy. We're going to have all these great models guys. You got to build them and you got to sell them at a profit and then we'll take you seriously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And produce them massively in, in the best case, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, that's and not it. discontinue that's your best selling EV again. <laughs> yeah. Again. Again. Yeah. That's true. Crazy, crazy. Absolutely. Uh, how do you see the, the, the EV startups uh, ramping up? Maybe Rivian, is it a, is it a close f f fifth place or anything? How do you see it? I mean, Rivian was very popular with their, with their pickup truck that they've did. And it's a beautiful car, um, as far as I know. But I've heard that service pretty much is bad. Um, we have to see how they can improve this. And some faulty, faulty cars were around, some bad apples. But um, yeah, how do you view Rivian? And then we can just maybe talk sure. slightly about Lucid. But yeah. Uh, of the startups, Rivian's the only one that I have remotely any faith in. Their numbers mm -hmm. are growing. Their losses are shrinking and mm -hmm. you see them on the road all the time. Yeah. Uh, 
um, when when you look at a company and say, well, look who's backing them. Amazon is backing them and Amazon is buying the delivery trucks. I don't yep. see them where I'm at. I'm a little too far from the distribution center. Mm -hmm. But when you're in just about any major city, you will see Rivian delivery vans out in use. The drivers love them because they have air conditioning that works. They're quiet. <laughs> they don't they don't idle all day. They're not they don't rattle the way the gas trucks do. So if Rivian is within a, a few quarters of profitable, they are they're they're good to go. Everyone okay. else is so far behind, even Rivian. And Rivian's far from out of the woods, but they're pointed in the right direction at least. Yeah. But everyone mm -hmm. else is is just not worth talking about yet. I have some that I really like, um, but it's mm -hmm. it, you know just because VinFast made <laughs> billions on their on their public offering, their SPAC doesn't mean they're mm -hmm. making cars that are going to survive. Doesn't mean they're going to be profitable. Doesn't mean they're going to have enough capital to actually get these factories open to make cars in North America. So mm -hmm. there's it's much too soon to to declare any winners among startups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting, because also WinFast had a lot of issues with with their cars. The tests were horrible. Um, I've seen a video from the the uh, those car guys, um, Donut. Donut? Um, maybe, yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. And, and this that test was, was good. Uh, yeah, they, they, I love their content. It's pretty high, high quality, gr great stuff. Uh, please check them out. It's very funny to watch them. Very um, appealing to the masses. And um, what's really cool uh, is that... <laughs> It always beeps every time. It uh, the warning uh, goes grows crazy, and it, it it will make you crazy. This car at first, they try to fix it, but but they have those those issues, and um, yeah, maybe they were too early to market or something like this. They they try to push them out, and it shows. It it really much shows. But yeah, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. And the other thing with with the yeah with the donut video that they showed was, not only does the blind spot protection go off when there's no one there sometimes it doesn't go off when there are cars there <laughs> making yeah. the feature less than useless it's now dangerous <laughs> yeah absolutely and uh if this is on the road um and something happens i think um they're gonna especially in the u.s they're gonna get sued big time yeah, yeah. it's yeah. pretty dangerous too to have this okay so Interesting stuff. You've, you've. We, I mean, the, in this episode, we we <laughs> tried to cover it all. We did. We just ran through it, and um, it's yeah, interesting times to see, and that's that's pretty awesome. So maybe you can say to my audience, ask a question. What do you want to know, or what are you up to? What what do you have in the pipeline that that we might be interested? You can share this now, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to hear about your next things you're gonna do uh you broke up so much in that i'm sorry could you could you do it again i'm sorry okay yeah just uh so maybe you can just tell the audience what you're up to what what what's next and what you want to pitch or what you want to uh, plug here for my small audience <laughs> sure so what have i got coming up well i've got some great interviews this week uh with you, uh, with Randy yeah. Kirk, I've got some coming up with uh, Lee from Tesla Economist. He's coming on the show, awesome. yeah. uh, uh, coming back. Uh, he's been on once before. And uh, I've got a ton of footage still left from the California takeover and other events I've been to this summer. And uh, even on the 26th, I'm going to EVs and Caffeine, a little uh, EV car meetup in, in Vancouver, Washington at Creed Coffee. So come and find me there. Uh, Sometimes people do. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we, we, it, those events are great. If you can go to an EV, uh, meetup, whether you own an EV or not, they're wonderful because you can ask the silliest, dumbest question, something that you'd be embarrassed to ask and get sincere, honest, quality answers from owners who actually know. And mm -hmm. you can ask the hardest, most impossible question that doesn't even have an answer. And you've got 20 dedicated enthusiasts there who will debate it live in front of you. It's so much fun. That's why I'm going to come to Tesla Takeover or X Takeover next year. I have to do it. I'm going to schedule it. 
beforehand and try to get there. And uh, then we're going to meet up finally. As <laughs> I hope you're the, uh, you are there too then. And going to meet up with Farz and everybody. I'm going to do this. I'm going to plan this and try to fly over there. I have to do it next year because this year I couldn't do it because my toddler is still too too young to uh, actually I have to I, I've just recently became father so it was too too stressful to to schedule this sadly but um, yeah so thank you very much uh, that you've been here Brian of course you're a channel favorite here and um, yeah there's only one last thing we can say to my audience and that's goodbye everybody Wasn't this episode awesome? Let's accelerate the pace of innovation by subscribing to Tesla FX. It is my absolute favorite channel on the whole interwebs.